Sean Yang. I'm a game designer. Woo! I'm a game designer on best game ever, Diablo 3. Um, I'm here to talk to you all about uh, the stories behind some of Diablo's most memorable and iconic items. How they were conceived, how they were designed, how they've changed over time, how they've impacted the game, and some of the developer insights from from backstage, you know, behind the scenes, that I think you guys will find interesting. Uh, so first off, we have Shard of Hate. Many of you probably know Shard of Hate. It was an item designed through a community series of events. I mean, the community voted on the name, the art, the item, the theme, uh, the powers. We had a live stream for it. And the reception initially was awesome. I, the item was crazy powerful. You guys remember Barbarians with Shard of Hate. The blast through Torment 6. No one else could even touch it. It was crazy overpowered. Uh, that was the that was the second reaction to it. Um, <laughs> early on in Re 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 Reaper of Souls lifetime, we were really concerned about balance, nerfing overpowered items. We said, you know what, Shard of Hate, it is too much. We're destroying T6. Uh, no other class could even touch their damage. And we said we really shouldn't have done that. You know, fast forward six months, a year, we unnerfed the item back to its original state. And even in its original state, at the current point in time, it's a really underused item. If you see on this chart here, it's used by just barely 1% of barbarians. 1%. It's very low. Um, so in retrospect, Okay, here you go. Um, in, retrospect, in retrospect, things aren't as overpowered as they seem at first. We shouldn't be too hasty to nerf items. We gotta let the game evolve and grow. Because everything will probably be okay. And I think that philosophy is something we really held on to for the rest of Reaper Souls development after the Shroud of Hate incident. Focus on restraint. A ring pair that I'm sure basically all of you are using because it's the strongest. Our intent for the set was to give a pair of rings that supported the gameplay of using generators and spenders. You know, a lot of builds at the time were just using one skill. One skill only, it's, it's less gameplay, it's less mindful, you're really just doing one thing. We wanted at least two things to change up the gameplay. And it actually worked. It was really strong. We made you use at least two buttons to tackle it. But the problem for us was, this is what the gameplay actually looked like. You were really just looking at two buff slots on your buff icon, on your buff UI. You weren't looking at your character, you weren't looking at your game, you weren't looking at the looking at the ground for what's dangerous. You were trying really hard to find these two buff icons that actually look the same too. It's probably my fault. Um, the, the takeaway for us from this is actually pretty simple. Items that reinforce great gameplay is what we want. We want items that that make the game fun to play. But UI clutter is really bad. If we go back in time, I think we might have seriously reconsidered a different design for the set of rings that um, doesn't clutter up the UI as much. You know, why I talked earlier today um, at a panel yesterday about the buff UI revision we did. And a lot of the reason we did it is because of items that create buff icons, like focus of restraint and convention developments. Um, games should be played for the game, not for the UI. We want to avoid that as much as possible. The furnace. Probably the most cute item in Diablo. I would, I would bet money on it. Um, it's a pretty simple power. It increases damage against leads by 50%. What are elites in the game? Elites are the mobs in the game that deal more damage, have more health than everything else uh, than the, the normal monsters. They're all the challenge in the game. How did we design this item? So we wanted an item to help you versus those elites. That, that makes sense. Things are hard, you're giving an item to be hard versus that. But this is how we tuned to balance the item. We did some napkin math that said, you're fighting leads about half the time in the game. Other items, say Maximus, for example, give you about 25% more damage all the time or anything. So we said, we'll just double that and give you 50% versus the leads. But that missed the mark completely, as you all know. Furnace is probably a little too powerful, and this is why. Items that help you when you need it most are really, really powerful. I mean, it's the, it's the reason cooldown abilities are great. When you're fighting an elite pack, you pop your cooldown, you like massacre that group. Uh, furnace was exactly that, and we tuned it too high for we tuned it too high for that reason. That it was good versus elites when you need it most. Because elites and monsters, elites and boss monsters are all the challenge in the game. 
Elemental Immunity Ambulance. There are the five ambulances you put in the game that make you immune to one of the each, each of the five monster elements. Arcane, Lightning, Cold, etc. Um, early on, before we released the items, we weren't sure if we could actually put out items that made, that made you completely immune to an element, such as fire, or lightning, or arcane. You know, arcane beams are murderous. Even today, uh, Jailer and arcane sentries are among the most damaging things in the game. Um, we really questioned ourselves, and the players did too, whether it was okay to release items that made you completely immune. We thought about it and said, we have the benefits. Uh, the five amulets all occupy the amulet slot. We can't all wear more than one at a time until now, can I ask you? Um, and if we had a monster that, said, that only did cold damage or poison damage, and we're completely immune, we could make changes to make that monster do other sorts of damage. And the other benefits that uh, a really powerful set of five amulets provides is item options are great. You know, very often we'll, we'll hear players say, you know what? I just can't deal with Frozen because maybe I'm a melee build and I don't have a lot of mobility. Um, or maybe I'm a demon hunter who just gets one shot by Jailer and there's nothing I can do about it. What can I do? Well, we, or what we say is we gave you options. You put on this elemental immunity amulet and it helps you deal with a specific problem. And specific solutions to specific problems are very useful and very helpful and great for the game. Mortex Brace. Alright, who here's got a Mortex Brace? That's right, none of you. No, I do. Uh, you have it on console? Yep. You're banned. Uh, so here's Mortex Brace. Uh, it enables the every rune of Wrath of Berserker. Wrath of Berserker has five runes. It makes the skill about five times more powerful than it normally is. Here's Wrath of Berserker. It's the Barbarian class's most powerful two minute cooldown ability. The last 20 seconds normally. Separately, in that same patch in 2-3, we had made a uh, Mortal King's Fortress bonus that effectively made Wrath of Berserker last forever. It made it basically have no cooldown. So what happened was, we had these two powers that independently were very, very normal. We have a lot of items that say, enables in every room, lasts forever, you know, removes the cooldown, whatever. But when you multiply these two together, having all the rooms all the time was insanely powerful. Um, we wanted to PTR, not really thinking about it, and when, the, when, when it came time to look at the leaderboard, see how players were doing, we found the barbarians were performing far better than we wanted them to. We really wanted the class to be, to be balanced, you know? Um, and we said uh, the synergy was too strong. We pulled the item the last, at the last minute. Our takeaway from the Tale of Mortex Brace is we really got to take into account all the game mechanics in the game when releasing items and making items. When two items synergize with each other, uh, they're far more powerful than the sum of the parts. They multiply together. And that was a part of the state with Mortex Brace. And we're more careful about that now. Sonwuko pack. Sonwuko set for patch 2.1. So you guys played Monk at the time. The Sonwuko set bonus at the time was Spending 75 Spirit spawned a clone that dealt 3,500% weapon damage. Auto target AoE. Uh, so players said, hey, you know what? I want to generate as much spirit as possible and spend it as fast as possible to do the most amount of damage. And what did they choose? Was it Lash and Tail Kick? Wave of Light? Nope, it was Mantra Spam. Uh, people mashed the buttons, people made macros. Uh, it, was, it was terrible. Uh, the gameplay was just hold down left click and then hold down another button without caring for where you're aiming because the clones would just spawn and kill everything for you. On top of that, the players who manually spammed the button had physical physical pain. A lot of players complained that my hand hurt. My wrist hurt. God, please stop this. Uh, and this is one of the things where we actually actually pretty quickly to it. We're happy with what we did. Uh, we changed the set bonus at the time to require you to spend spirit using an attack. You know, lash and tail cake, wave of light, uh, etc. And these did uh, in patch 2.4, we've updated the set even further to uh, support a uh, sweeping wind, sweeping wind focused playstyle that provides both damage and toughness via s sweeping wind and has you spending the same spenders as before, wave of light, you know, lashing token. Um, the takeaway here is something not specific to the Samuka set, but it's just for the game. I would say all games in general. We, we want you to push buttons, we want you to push it intentionally. This is a button that we make you push every two seconds and you always want to push it. It's free, it has no cooldown, it has no cost. There's no reason to have that button in the game. It should be changed. We 
because mindless gameplay is really bad. Spamming gameplay is even worse, because they're going to cause physical pain. And button presses should be meaningful and intentional, because that's what the gameplay is. When do I push my buttons? Where do I push it? Where is my character? Where are the monsters? How am I positioned? Sever. This is a pretty interesting item, actually. Um, it's a really mysterious power. Slaying enemies by some pieces. What does that mean? So on the right, that 79k in white, if you can see the screen, is the damage you dealt to the monster to deal the killing blow. Pretty small amount. 1967k? That was severed, dealing additional damage that was purely meant to be cosmetic, just for visuals, because big numbers are cool, everyone likes big numbers, and critical deaths, it was also guaranteed critical damage. And critical deaths on monsters caused them to explode, and like bloody guts and stuff, it looked cool. It big numbers, it looked cool uh, in two different ways. Intended purely to be cosmetic. But, uh, how did players decide to use this? Well, mark for death. Grim 7. So, there's a mark for death room that said, whenever you deal damage to one enemy, spread 20% of that damage to all enemies around it. Naturally, players found out that using Sever with mark for death meant that they could cause unintended amounts of damage. A lot of damage. Um, we responded quickly, pretty quickly and hotfixed and nerfed this, this, this combination. Um, but for us, the lesson we learned was, when we're making items and things in the game, we want to make it with the original intent in mind. If we want it to look cool, we should do it via effects and art, instead of making you get a huge damage number, especially if it can cause gameplay ramifications future. Because players, you all will always find creative uses for mechanics. That's what you guys do best. Um, and it really sucks getting things nerfed or taken away. We don't like it either, so that was our fault. Shimizu's Halloween. Yeah, Shimizu. Steve Shimizu is our lead gameplay programmer. Um, okay, th this item is named after him. He's in the back here. And here's why the item is bad. <laughs> Shimizu's Halloween. What the item did was, uh, when you're low on health, it guaranteed you critical hits. Uh, what the intention was, when you're low on health, when you're taking damage and you're death, it gave you tons of damage. Guaranteed critical hits means your damage is probably quadruple, right? Um, so it was supposed to help you when you needed it most. How players decided to use it and tried to use it was try to gain the benefit all the time um, by staying at really low health. And then they got mad when they died. They got mad when they were killed by a health bug. They got mad when other people killed them. It was terrible. It was really awful. Um, on top of that, this is what it looked and sounded like when you were at low health. The screen was bright red, it was super stressful, it was loud heart thumping that noise. That's not how the game is meant to be played, but that's what players want to do, because they always want to maximize damage. That's perfectly fine. Our takeaway from this is, uh, when designing legendary items, we really need to reinforce desirable gameplay. And desirable gameplay includes things like uh, healing up the full, healing up your friends, killing monsters, avoiding damage, avoiding danger. Progressing in the rift or something like that, and uh, that was that was a thing. Uh, Nagel ring, okay. Nagel ring uh, from patch two three, I believe, summons a fallen lunatic to your side every ten seconds. You could have about four of them. Here are the fallen lunatics. These bright blue guys that walk up to monsters and explode. This is what they did. They, they dealt incredible amounts of damage to anything in, their, in sight. And it was cool. It's awesome. Uh, they're super flavorful. There are monsters you know and love or hated. Uh, and the item itself was cool. So what was the problem? Well, the problem was we released the item at level 11. And that was a really low level for players. And the item was so powerful that a lot of players found this item, new players, like very new players playing the game for the first time. They found this item and they're just walking around and then everything died, including monsters and bosses. And they didn't get to actually play the game. This player here, he's like level 40, 42, he says, I found this ring at low level. I haven't actually fought a boss because by the time I load in, the boss is dead from Nagel Rain. And that sucks. Our response to Nagel Rain is pretty simple. We just increased the maximum level to 40. Uh, at level 40, you should have fought every boss once, beaten them, seen their mechanics, overcome the challenge. Uh, because protecting the first time experience is really important. I think you all may remember the first time you ever fought Diablo or the Butcher or you know any of the other bosses in the game, and it was fun. 
and the second time you fight it, if you're more powerful and you're overpowered and you obliterate them, that's cool. As long as you have the first time to practice. But if you're playing a game and everything is trivialized by an item that you found on low level, it's not a game. And the game is fun. And we took away the fun from you. So that was our mistake. We're fixing that in Touch 2 4. But we do have a lot of overpowered items in the game. That's what Diablo is all about. But we want to save them for max level, for players who are more experienced. Unity. Unity was a ring that was intended for you and a buddy to both put the ring on. And you guys can share the damage between you two. You, neither of you takes more damage than the other. You guys die and live equally. Separately, there's another set of items that made you a follower of more. And we did that uh, for each of the followers. So players found a combination of using these items. Where you put a unity on your follower, you put the follower's immune relic on them, Unity on you, three items total, and that made you transfer 50% of the damage you took to your follower. And that was actually pretty cool. But it was actually really powerful at the time. And this combo existed when the game first shipped. Uh, sorry, when Reaper of Souls first shipped in patch 2.0. Uh, a lot of players said this is the only way to go. There's no other, no other ring you can possibly wear except for Unity. Uh, it was so powerful that players didn't want to play in groups either because single solo players were so powerful. You know, you had a ring that reduced 50% of your damage in solo player. In groups, it didn't really do anything. And, and we questioned if it was okay. Um, we, we liked that the, the combo required three items. That's a lot of items to find every season. Uh, the combo was cool. Uh, half your damage being re redirected to your following was kind of a cool mechanic. And at that time, we didn't really have a lot of powerful rings. We said to ourselves, is there anything we can do besides nerfing? this one powerful combo in the game. And we decided to double down on it and make more and more powerful rings. I think in patch 2-3, you guys saw, we doubled down on rings. We made Obsidian Ring of Zodiac, Convention of Elements, Focus on Restraint. Tons and tons of powerful rings for the ring slot. Because instead of nerfing the one powerful thing, we wanted to buff everything else and make more interesting, interesting choices for that slot. Here are four of the rings that are in patch 2.4. Some of them are as powerful as Unity defensively. Some of them provide as much damage or more as Unity of the elements, depending on your build. And this is the kind of thing we're committed to doing, instead of nerfing powerful things. And this goes back to the Shard of Hate lesson that we learned at the beginning. Our takeaways, overall, for the entire presentation in the game. Don't nerf the best item. We want to buff everything else. We want more powerful, interesting choices. I think the ring slot is one of the hottest and most contentious slots in the game right now because there are so many powerful things that you want to wear there. Um, and you have to choose. You have to choose two or three. Buff everything else instead, make more and more powerful and overpowered items. Because that's what Diablo 3 is all about, being overpowered. Thank you.